Hello again, everybody. Quick video today for you on App Image Launcher. So, App Images are a universal package format that allow you to download a single file and run that as an alternative to installing a series of packages and dependencies. So, you've probably heard about this or seen this with things like Snaps, Flat Packs, and App Image is another type of format that allows you to do this in a somewhat similar way. Snaps and Flat Packs have dependencies, so they pull in more information, whereas app images are fully contained and it's just a single file that you would set as executable and then run. One of the things with app images are they sometimes will ask if you want them to integrate into your system, essentially create a launcher in your menu. So when you come to your menu here, you'd be able to find that app image and run it as if it was installed as an application on your system. But many of them don't do that. And so what you have to do then in that case is to come to wherever you have those app images download and then launch them from the file itself. Not a major issue, but it's not as smooth as having it built into your menu. And it just makes it feel sort of like a second class application on the system, even though app images run perfectly well and really just as well as flat packs and snaps and any anything else like that. So to overcome this, there is a helper application called App Image Launcher, which they describe as a kind of entry point for running and integrating app images. And essentially what it does is it runs in the background and watches for app images being launched. And when it detects one, whether or not that app image has the built-in option of allowing you to integrate it into the system, it will perform that step for you no matter what. And so it gives you the choice of running once or integrating and running and essentially what it's doing is creating a launcher for you in your local folder. And, and I'll, I'll show you how that works. So if we were to run, I don't have App Image Launcher installed at this point. So as an example of app images that don't integrate or don't offer to integrate, I've got Alina Etcher, the Olive Video Editor, and the Bitwarden application. So when you download an app image, the first thing you need to do is to right click and make sure under permissions that it's set as executable. If this is not set and you go to run this, it'll say it doesn't know what to do with it. So if you get a message around unknown file type, I'm on Cinnamon and that this is the prompt that Cinnamon gives you. This may vary depending on your desktop environment. But suffice to say, if you try to launch an app image and it hasn't been made executable, it won't launch. So the easiest thing to do is just right click in your file manager, select the executable bit here and say close. The other option is if you look at, let's say, Bitwarden, let's uncheck this. If you were to look at, let's maybe open this. If you were to look at the properties of the files in here, eh, it's a little too small. Let's see. Okay. So you see that Etcher has the X bit set here, which is the executable and so these others are not set to be executable. So if I check Olive, you see that allow executing is not set. So you can do that through the file manager, like I said, but you can also do the chmod plus X on, let's say, Olive. And now if we look again, you'll see that the X is there at the end. And if we check the file here, you see that it sets it. So it's it's doing the same thing, whether you do it through the file manager or on the command line. I just wanted to show you that you could do it either way. So once it's set, then you can double click and it will launch. But you notice here when it opens, it's going to just launch the application, but there was no prompt to add it to your menu. And so if I were to come back and look and search for Belina, it found the zip file that I had downloaded with this. This was originally in a zip file, but it's not finding it as a as an application. Bitwarden is the same way, Oops, set my executable, where it's going to just launch and again, no prompt. But Joplin is an example of one that does prompt you. So if I double click this, you'll see you get this prompt here that says, would you like to integrate it with your system? This will add it to your applications menu and install icons. So I'm going to say yes, and then Joplin's going to load. Not only did it load, but it also added a an icon and a shortcut in your menu. Now, Cinema's not going to see this right away. There are just times where it doesn't pick it up. So I'm actually going to do a quick reset on the desktop. And if I come back to the menu now and go to Office, now you see there's a Joplin entry in the menu. And that was because, again, it asked us to do that. If I come back here and go to my home folder and look in the local share applications directory. Now you see there's a Joplin file here and now I can open this with text editor and show you that it is in fact a desktop file and it is. So basically what the integration did here was to create this desktop entry file, which is what the menu is looking for to include in here. And so there you go. So now that we know how that works, let's
let's look at app image launcher and what this does. So I downloaded the RPM file. If you're depending on which distribution you're on, there are some different ways to get this. When they release it, they have releases for different architectures, different or, yeah, different architectures, different desktops. So you see they mention Ubuntu and Debian, Netrunner, OpenSUSE. And what I did was I just went to the releases section and I grabbed the RPM, which I believe works on OpenSUSE. I'm not sure if it works on Fedora or not. I haven't tried. There's also the dev package here. And I believe, again, that mentioned that it was for Debian and Ubuntu. And there's also this light version, which allows you to, to use this as a non-root user or without root privileges, I guess. I haven't tried it. And they recommend that this is still, I guess, early days with this. And they recommend that you actually, if you can, use the full release. So, all right. So I've got the RPM. I am going to install this. So now that's installed. Let's go ahead and launch one of these app images that was not prompting us to integrate itself last time. So let's look at Etcher. And all of a sudden, App Image Launcher now recognizes, like I said, and it's going to do a couple things. One is it's going to run in the background and it is going to prompt you to install whenever you launch an app image. It's also going to move them, all the app images, to a central folder. And the nice thing about this is it keeps things organized. So if you download an app image, maybe you're not consistent about where you're downloading them to. Like I said at the beginning of this, it can be a little confusing because they're not integrated in your menu. You might have them in downloads. You might have them all over the place and you'd have to go and find the app image to launch it. And what this is offering to do for you is create this applications directory. And then as it's adding them, it will actually move them there. And then you'll have a central location on your system where all those app image files are located and you'd be able to see them and manage them. And it just cleans it up for you. So that's a nice little side benefit of this service. And so once I set those initial preferences, I won't see that screen again. This is what I'll see normally. And it's asking if I want to run once or integrate and run. And I'm going to say integrate and run. And you notice now it sort of dis it disappeared from this directory. And if I were to come to my home folder, I now have an applications directory and there is the app image. Also, I will see that in my accessories, I now have an entry for Alina Etcher. All right. So now when I close this and if I come back to my menu, I can search and there's Etcher. And now the same will be true for Bitwarden, like integrate and run. And it moved it over to the applications folder. And now if I go to the under internet and oh, accessories, there you go. Bitwarden shows up. And I also downloaded Olive, which is a excellent video editor and it's going to do the same thing. And so there you go. And now I have these shortcuts and I can treat them just like shortcuts and say, I'm going to pin this to the panel. And so it stays there and it's treating an app image just like a first class application that's installed on your system. So in addition to giving you the ability to do the desktop integration part, there's also an update manager. So some app images include an option to update and depending on how they have integrated it, this gives you a nice clean way to do that. So if you right click on the entry, you see update app image. And if you click that, depending on the app image support for it, again, this one, Olive doesn't support that. Some do. And if they do, then that gives you the ability to run that update directly from there. You also notice when I right click, there is the ability to remove from the system. And if I click that and say, okay, oh, and I have to unpin this. But if I come back to applications, you see that it removed Olive from the system and it is in fact gone. So just a great toolkit for managing app images on your system, treating them more like first class applications, giving you ways to integrate them, to update them, to remove them, and really just a very solid piece of software that has helped me manage app images in a much cleaner and integrated way than by, like I mentioned before, just coming to a, a directory and launching them individually. So there you go. That's really all I wanted to cover in this video. Questions and comments below, like and subscribe if you did, and I will see you in the next video.